There are 6.5 million kilometers of roads in the United States, and more than 65% of them are paved. Add sidewalks, driveways, parking lots to the mix, and that's a lot of asphalt and concrete. And more cement means more consequences. In cities that are already becoming warmer through climate change, the last thing we need is to heat things up with more concrete. In flood-prone areas, the consequences can be even worse. We're below sea level. We get 64 inches of rain. We've got subsidence. In some parts of town, we're, we're sinking as much as two inches a year. We're a coastal city, but we're seeing the coast evaporate. We're seeing land loss along the coast, and we're seeing rising sea levels. So all of that together means we've got serious problems that we've had for a long, long time, but we had this false sense of security that we could pump our way out of them. And what changed post-Katrina was like, we can't rely on the pumping system. We have to start back here. We have to start on our yards. We have to figure out how to manage the water, control the water, tell the water where to go, find space for the water, slow it down, spread it out, let it soak in to recharge the groundwater to reduce the subsidence. We have to do all of that. We can't wait for the city to, to do all of that. We, as individuals, each have to own the water where it falls. Dana leads Urban Conservancy, a nonprofit that encourages citizens to roll up their sleeves and get a little dirty. Today, the team is helping John here transform his front yard by setting up a unique water retrieval system. There you go. So we're actually gonna crush these pieces down and recycle them. Basically crush it into gravel to then use as a, an underlayer for other drainage. Like projects. what we're seeing out here? Similar, yeah. But at least with gravel, the water is able to go through and reach the ground. And just take it as is. Like realistically, this kind of acupuncture, urbanism, mm -hmm. this one home here, another yeah. home over there. I mean, does it have an, uh, an effect? What the pumping system can do is pump out um, at any given time 450 million gallons of water out of the city. Wow. Um, what we can do is supplement that. On the residential side, with even 20% of the houses participating, you've got 20 million gallons per rain event. And more importantly, you're building in that understanding with every homeowner you touch, you're building in the education of like why this matters. And you may feel like this doesn't matter, but in the aggregate, it does make a difference. To date, have worked with 55 homeowners. We've removed over 30,000 square feet of paving and we estimate that that's about 70,000 conservatively gallons of water kept out of the storm drain per rain event. For Urban Conservancy, partnering with like-minded organizations was clearly the most efficient way to grow. So they joined forces with Sol Nola, who plant trees, and Greenlight New Orleans, who install rain barrels. And then they hired local landscapers who now get to learn a whole new way of improving front lawns across town. A friend of mine told me about this program, and I saw another avenue to help my business to grow, you know, make that another asset for right. me. How do you choose the trees? That's a cypress, and that drinks, once the tree is mature, 880 gallons of water per day when it's raining. Wow, okay. So if we just planted one of those trees on the street, it wouldn't necessarily have an impact. But we have planted, thanks to John, our block captain, the homeowner, mm -hmm. we've planted the entire street. Mm -hmm. um, so then you have a lot of trees that drink a lot of water and can live through being inundated with, with water if we have a street flood. Right. Um, and then they can drink up thousands of gallons of water per day once they're mature. Right. So that's what we do is we try to cluster trees around the city. Downspout. <laughs> Why is this important? Rain barrel is pretty much the easiest, simplest way for a homeowner or a renter to actually retain that water. It doesn't make sense to go and buy tap water out of the faucet mm -hmm. if we have too much water already. Right. right? Yeah. You know, it's about a dollar fifteen cents worth of water. Mm -hmm. This fills up over the year. We did some research. It it fills the barrel up about forty to fifty times. So he saves around fifty bucks a year. What's your vision for the future of New Orleans? Everybody doing a little of something. We had some severe flooding in August of 2017, and the question everybody had after that, it was a microburst. So it was just like out of the blue, we got seven or nine inches in a, in a matter of a couple of hours, and we had severe flooding. And that really threw everybody back on their heels, 
sent, sent us a lot, a lot of us into post-traumatic stress syndrome after yeah. Katrina. And, and the question was, can we continue to live here? And that's a scary question, you know? Yeah. And, and the answer that we've come up with is, yes, we can, but we've all got our bit to do. So on a busy shooting schedule with the Life Size City, we're all over the place, we work long days, but sometimes you get an opportunity to see the effect of something that I participated in. So you can see that everything is working as it should. The rain barrel's probably getting filled up today as well. It's completely dry here, so the effect is visible. And if you just look over here, now we have the trees planted along here that will soak up the water, but you can see the classic traffic engineering, uh, how it's created a massive puddle, uh, difficult to get around. As is often the case, this is a simple fix to a simple problem. And it changes things, one house at a time. Side by side, we can now see how other houses on this very street would benefit from a similar do-it-yourself project.